Welcome to this episode of ADF Architecture TV. My name is Frédéric Debien. I'm part of the product management team for Oracle ADF. Today I will talk about internationalization and user interface design. User interface design is something very, very wide. It's a complex topic. And today my aim is not to tell you how to build uh, good looking screens or very usable screens. Rather, my aim is to provide you guidance on how to build screens that will be easy to internationalize. In the previous episode, we have seen that internationalization is about much more than text strings, and it's, it is a case today. So, imagine, think about your uh, latest project uh, or the project you are currently working on. Uh, think about the most complex screen in it. Now, suppose I'm your customer and I ask you, translate this in Chinese, translate this in French. What will be the impact? Well, probably, yes, you will have to translate the text strings, but maybe those text strings won't fit right. Maybe the pixel-perfect alignment you had designed won't be good anymore in another language. But there's more to it than that. You have selected icons, you have selected colors, you have uh, design the layout of the screen in a specific way. Well, maybe the way you designed it will not fit in another cultural context. So, today I will give you basic guidance about that and make you think about all the possible issues around internationalization and user interface design. Now, Today, there is nothing specific about Oracle ADF in the session, so you can apply this guidance to nearly any modern technology platform. When designing screens for internationalization, one of the first challenges you will have to overcome is the need for space. And by that, I mean not every language needs the same space in order to express the same ideas. So, for example, if you go on the Flickr website, they have selected in English a word to express the number of times an image was seen. In English, they used views. Well, the very, very same idea expressed in different languages will occupy much more or a bit less space depending on the language. So, for example, Korean is probably the most compact expression of the concept whereas French, German and Italian are much longer. I mean, Italian is three times the length for the same word as the English equivalent. And this is a big challenge when designing a UI. You need to come up with a design that will look good in your preferred language, uh, typically English, but will accommodate the need for space for other languages. And this is something you need to take into account uh, at the prototype stage even. There's no universal recommendation I can make about how much space to plan for in order for, to make your screens easy to internationalize. So there are rules of thumb that uh, you can certainly refer to, but you will need to tweak them according to the specific vocabulary used in your application and uh, at some times your personal preferences for one translation over the other. Um, so we at Oracle have several uh, very complex uh, applications that we are uh, making available and thus we offer such uh, guidelines uh, sometimes. So in the JD Edwards documentation, for example, we give guidelines about how much space to plan for for expansion for a screen that will be internationalized or translated. So if you've got one character, you should plan for 400% or four, four character, depending um, which case applies, and etc. Uh, etc. Et so I reproduced that recommendation on the slide, but this should be tweaked, as I say, um, depending uh, according to your specific needs. So there's no universal rule, but here is a starting point for you uh, if you feel you need one. There are other things you need to take into account. First one is that you should never use uh, unapproved abbreviations, acronyms or symbols. And by that I mean you need to make 
an explicit list of abbreviations that are accepted in your user interfaces. You need an approved list of symbols or icons. You need an approved list of acronyms. If you don't have that and leave everybody, you know, put anything he likes in the screens, you will have discrepancies and this will make the task harder for internationalization and for your users because you will lack consistency. Also, the character shapes for most foreign languages will take up more space than what is used uh, in English, so you need to take that into account when planning for the layouts. Also, some languages may not have direct equivalents for the words you are using in English, or maybe English doesn't have a direct equivalent for the language you are using as the primary one for the application. So, once again, this will uh, force you to think about how to express ideas. And finally, there are some countries even where using the active voice is considered impolite. And in any language using the passive voice will take up more space. So once again, depending on your target markets, depending on the target cultures, you will need to uh, think about that and ensure that the longest version of any sentence, any, any word that you put in the user interface will fit and at the same time that it still looks good when you use shorter versions uh, of the words or of the sentences. User interface labels are uh, something really, really important uh, in order to make your application usable. And there are some things you shouldn't do if you want them to translate or to be uh, internationalized correctly. The first one is that Always spell out contractions. Never use contractions in the screens and do not use possessives. Also, when you have compound actions, use OR and AND if you are uh, using English and use the appropriate equivalent words in other languages. So don't use symbols to convey that because those symbols maybe won't be understood in your target cultures. Also, there are some uh, constructions like AND slash OR and uh, there are equivalents to other languages but such, uh, such constructions are very very ambiguous and you shouldn't use them because if it's ambiguous in the, in the source language imagine what it could be when you try to translate it or port it to another culture and slashes uh, shouldn't uh, be used typically as uh, UI labels because once again they can obscure the meaning of what you are trying to say. Here is some more advice. First, ensure you always use complete sentences in your labels. That way you will avoid ambiguity. Also, do not convey semantic differences by the use of capitalization. For example, in some religious books you will have a difference between God with a capital G and God with a lowercase g. Don't do that in your user interfaces. Also, it is really, really important to sometimes translate the name of your products in the user interface. In Oracle cases, typically we don't do that, so Oracle Database is always Oracle Database, whatever language you consider. But maybe in your specific industry, it could be a good idea to translate even the product names. And finally, when applicable, leave spaces between the text and numbers. Uh, that way, you will ensure that everything will be represented correctly, especially if the currency sign must be put at the beginning instead of the end, uh, depending on the selected locale. There is also a very, very interesting thing you need to, to, to take into account if your system, website or application targets the Middle East. Most Middle Eastern languages will be written from right to left, but at the same time, Figures in those same languages will be written from left to right exactly like you do with English or French. Software that supports this is often referred as having BD or bidirectional support. This is fully supported by the Java Enterprise Edition platform and by extension ADF, 
But the nicest thing about the ADF implementation is not necessarily obvious when you have a look at a screenshot. So here is a screenshot from Fusion applications. So if you are accessing Fusion applications on Oracle Cloud or if you are using it on premise, you can install the Arabic locale. So this is a screenshot of uh, Fusion financials in Arabic. And the nice thing about the ADF faces components that were used to build this page is that they are really, really meant to integrate in bidirectional locales. So the component properties, for example, do not make references to left and right. What we have is rather things like start and end. And that way, whether you are in left to right or right to left mode, everything will be uh, very, very easy to understand in a developer perspective. If you are a bit familiar with user interface usability, you may remember that typically in well-built applications and websites, the most important stuff will be always found on the left. In fact, uh, studies conducted by usability specialists found that on web pages, users will typically spend up to 69% of their time looking at the left half of the page. In that context, if you are building right now an application that will be used in bidirectional locales, it could be tempting for those locales to put the most important stuff on the right. And in ADF, this could easily be done through skinning, for example, or through the use of page templates according to the locale. Now, this is not something you should do unless you have a very, very specific requirement from a customer. Why is that? Well, studies conducted by Jacob Nielsen, and he is a very well-known usability specialist, and those studies found that typically users coming from Middle Eastern countries, for example, will have a tendency to behave differently whether they are using local websites and applications and international uh, applications and websites. So if they are reading, for example, the website for the local newspaper, yes, uh, they will expect to find the most important stuff on the right. On the other hand, if they are accessing the CNN website, for example, in the United States, then they will naturally look for the most important stuff on the left. So if those users are able to adapt, probably your users will be able to adapt too. So depending on your target market and depending on the exact requirements you have, probably that mirroring your user interface uh, is not necessary even if you are targeting a bidirectional locale. Another very important dimension to take into account are the visual elements of your applications, the images, the icons you will show your users. It's not enough to have uh, perfectly translated text strings and uh, business rules that make sense in a specific country and to have layouts that accommodate even languages with longer words like German. Okay? All of that is important, but it's not enough. In some contexts, the icons you have selected or the images you will display may be misunderstood. And here I put on the slide four examples that could be misunderstood um, depending where they are used. So first one, the red check mark. Okay. For you maybe this means okay, I'm striking out an element out of a list or I am marking a task as completed and that's fine. But in some cultures, and it was my case when I was in primary school, Teachers will use red check marks in order to denote mistakes in student answers. So, depending on what your target market is, uh, this specific element could be misunderstood. Also, the logo for the London Underground. Okay, it's obvious, the meaning is obvious for British people, but uh, before traveling to London a few years ago, I wasn't aware this was the logo of the London subway. So for me, uh, if you were trying to put that, you know, on a map, or if you were 
trying to express something through that specific image, maybe, um, you know, I couldn't interpret it correctly. The disk drive icon, which is everywhere in software applications, is a really interesting case. Okay, I'm old enough to have seen and even used diskettes, but uh, probably that my own children will never even see one, uh, maybe in museums. So, uh, what happens is that the meaning, okay, for that specific task, saving a document, saving a file, uh, is not necessarily conveyed well by the diskette icon. But the problem is, technology is evolving all the time, and sometimes uh, things are difficult to represent. So, even though um, in, a, in, a, in, a few, in a few decades or even in a few years, nobody will even remember what a diskette is, um, in this particular case, maybe uh, it's good to keep the diskette icon as the shortcut to the save operation because the meaning is now, you know, implicit. Okay, we are not, it's not a metaphor for save anymore. The diskette represents the save operation in the mind of people now. And this is why, even though this specific technology is obsolete, um, maybe it's a good idea to keep that specific icon, but maybe things will change in 10, 20, 30 years from now and you need to be aware of such potential issues, especially if your uh, system is expected to be used on a, on a very, very long life cycle. And finally, the fourth one is interesting. Uh, we see the logo for the Tata Group. Uh, Tata is a huge uh, conglomerate from India, a very uh, successful company now present uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, the problem here is not the logo, but the company's name. In the version of French spoken in Quebec, in, in the French slang spoken in Quebec, Tata means moron. So probably it's not a problem for the Tata group because they are doing business all over the world and Quebec is a very, very small market. But yet, this specific, um, this specific name maybe would have to be changed if they were doing uh, business on a serious scale in Quebec. I, I'm not saying they would necessarily do it, I'm not giving advice uh, to the leaders of such a successful company, but at the same time, it shows you how delicate sometimes it is to pick either a name, an icon, an image, and put it in your software application. That's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's one thing you should remember about it, it is that when you think about user interface design, most of the challenges you will have to overcome in an internationalized application are not about technology. They are rather about planning. You need to plan properly to get the layouts, the spaces you need in order to support a wide variety of languages. In addition, you need to ensure that the icons and images you will display make sense in the target locales. Now, in the next episodes, we'll uh, delve into more technical topics. And the very next one is about character encoding. Why character encoding? Basically, it's one thing to have nice layouts and a user interface that will support a locale, but you need to ensure that the characters that you will display are properly displayed, that the fonts that will be used do not garble the content. And this is where character encoding is so important. So, my name is Frédéric Devien. Thank you for watching this episode of ADF Architecture TV.